Hello and welcome back to Love and Romance Tarot Readings. I'm excited for today's pick a card. I love to do this kind of reading. Today we're tapping into your shadow, your dark side. We're going to see why do people fear you? Why are people afraid of you? We'll also see how people see you and what they think you have going on in your life. And then we'll see what kind of karma people get for messing with you as well. Or if there is someone specific on your mind we will tap into them and see what's going to happen to them for what they've done. So I just love this type of reading and I'm excited to get into it. My Etsy shop is in the description. If you would like your own private tarot reading or any of my other magical offerings, manifestation candles, custom spell work, all of that is on there. Other than that, you can pause the video if you need more time with the piles and you can always pick more than one pile as well for all of my readings. For group one, we have the dark blue diamond, and we'll be using the Nomad Soul Warrior Tarot. For group two, we have the orange diamond, and we'll be using the True Self Tarot. For group three, I think my cat was in here. There's like little specks on the diamonds. <laughs> For group three, we have the pink diamond. And we'll be using the Life's Journey Tarot. And for group four, we have the green diamond. And we'll be using the Weird World Tarot. So go ahead, pause the video if you need more time to decide, and we're just going to jump right into it. All right, if you chose group one with the dark blue stone and the nomad soul warrior tarot, this is your reading, tapping in to see your dark side, your shadow. Why do people fear you? Why are people afraid of you? We'll see their karma and we'll also get what people think you have going on in your life, how people see you. We'll get all of that spirit for group one with the dark blue stone. Please show us for group one, their shadow, their dark side, their spicy qualities. Okay, we got quite a few that came out already, so let's get right into it. First card out, we have the Engineer. The shadow attribute says, relies on uh, mechanistic solutions without regard for emotional consequences. So you could be a very end goal oriented person, someone who's like, listen, we got to get things done. And in order to get things done, we have to do A, B, and C. A, B, and C could hurt people. A, B, and C could offend people. But a part of your shadow side is you may not put too much weight on how things will make people feel. You may be very mechanistic like, okay, well, this is what needs to be done though. And that's kind of the bottom line. So we're still going to move forward with that plan. I keep hearing work as well. This could be uh, an area where you receive a lot of tension, like maybe with co-workers specifically. This could be seen in the work setting where it's like, okay, if there's a project or there's a process or something that needs to get done, people may want to go about it in a way that feels good to them, or they may want to go about it in a way that they can agree with versus just doing simply what needs to be done. And you coming across as someone who's just like very mechanistic, they could be a bit perturbed by you because it's like they don't feel like you take the time to acknowledge their feelings. We have the vampire. The shadow attribute says depleting others for your psychic survival. That's very specific that it says psychic survival. Chronic complaining and codependency. So you could be a complainer. Honestly, I'm definitely guilty of that. It's only when I'm hungry. When I'm hungry, I cannot, I don't know what it is. It's like compulsive. I cannot stop saying, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. Like, I just can't help it. So I relate to that, not gonna lie. You could be someone who 
um, is codependent on other people or someone who is consistently, you know, kind of voicing your grievances to the point where it may irk the people around you. And it says depleting others for your psychic survival. So that kind of, to me, reads as perhaps you maybe don't always honor what other people want. Um, maybe you like to see things the way that you like to see things. And when people disagree with the way that you see things, it's like you keep up with that story. So like for an example, um, say this is romantically. You could have someone who's like, oh, I'm busy with work right now. I'm busy with this and that. But it's like, that doesn't fit into my story. That doesn't fit into my fantasy. So you may continue to uh, like make advances towards people who aren't available for relationships, for example. And this can apply to anything. This is just the example that came up. First thing in my head, um, you know, you could, you know, keep pressing, you know, the, the, the story for your own psychic survival, for your own fantasy, uh, for your own uh, mental uh, beliefs and things like that. We have the gambler. It says relying on luck rather than hard work. So you could be someone who takes a lot of risks. You could be someone who's very rebellious, someone who does not surrender to social norms. And this could be disrupt disruptive, especially in the workplace um, where it's like, okay, you know, we got to do X, Y, Z. You could be someone who's like, ah, uh, nah, I think X, you know, I think so-and-so will handle it. Um, and then it kind of like puts, you know, more work on other people as an example. You could be someone who takes a lot of risks. We have the father, the shadow attribute. It says dictatorial control and abuse of authority. So you could be someone who's very knowledgeable, very wise. I feel like you're really good with the mind. Something about your mind is very strong and powerful almost to the extent that I feel intuitively that you can influence people with your beliefs. You can influence people with your thoughts. Um, that's something that I'm feeling. With that father energy coming in, it's kind of like you leave people with no choice but to follow you or agree with you, even if intuitively or personally they don't, because you may have the strongest argument or you may have the strongest mind. It's like, I will fight for this as long as it takes. I don't get tired. I always have a retort. I always have a reason why we should do things the way that I want to do them. So it's like people end up losing steam. They just can't. <laughs> I feel like people cannot go toe to toe with you mentally. They're going to lose. And then we have the hero slash heroine. This one says escapism and a false sense of heroism. So, you know, there could be a controlling nature to you. You could see yourself as someone who has the ability to save other people, but maybe you only do it like if it benefits you or maybe the way that you see things is very eccentric. But if you were to look at things from other people's perspective, it could be, you know, something that hurts them versus helps them. Yeah, that's the energy I'm getting. All right, let's keep going. Spirit, how do people see them? What do they, how do they see group one? What do they think they have going on? What do people think group one has going on? How do they see them? People are definitely intimidated by you. We have the apologies card. So people feel like they have to apologize to you. They have to make things right with you. Um, you may even notice a pattern of if people are intimidated to address you directly, they may go to friends, they may go to family and try to get them on their side and try to make amends to you through being friends with your friends, being friends with your family, or making amends with your friends, with your family so that they can get support and try to overpower you in some way. We also have the amulet here. So people see you as like very divinely protected. People see you as someone they cannot F with. The amulet 
says you are being protected divinely at this time. Forces beyond your control watch over you. You know what this reminds me of? Um, there was a astrologer that was looking at Meg the Stallion's chart, um, and they were they found some transit. I don't remember exactly what it is at the top of my head. Let me know in the comments below though what the what the aspect was in her chart. If you know, if you remember, if not, it's fine. But there is an aspect in her astrology chart that essentially makes her unaffordable. Your astrology, your personal astrology is so freaking powerful. We all have our own benefits and disbenefits. It's kind of like a character in a video game when you're looking at like, oh, they have extra strength here. They have extra speed here. They have healing powers. That's essentially how your chart is. And um, I feel like you guys may have something similar or your own protective thing in association with your astrology especially with psychic coming up on the vampire card like you know it said depleting others for your own psychic survival you may have the energy you may have the ability to like siphon energy from people in a psychic manner listen let me know what y'all got going on because that's powerful af and um if i can tap in that energy i definitely would <laughs> We have the apologies card. It says you will receive an apology from someone who hurt you or betrayed you in the past. So group one, what do they think you have going on? How they see you? They feel like they need to apologize with you. People see you as divinely protected. They feel like they have to make amends with you. People feel like they have to make amends. They have to resolve things. If things go left, if things go wrong, they feel like they have to fix it. They feel like... Otherwise, you know, things may start going wrong in their life. We also have the luck card. So it seems like you always get away with things. It says you will have luck in health matters. So I am specifically feeling this when it comes to like extended periods of time of feeling low. I don't feel like you struggle with that, either that or you really appear to save face because to be fair, this is how other people see you. It's not like, oh, this is fact. It's like, this is how other people see you and what they think you have going on. Other people see you as bouncing back from whether it's mental, physical, spiritual problems or low periods. Um, they see you as like bouncing back right away. It's almost like people cannot affect you mentally. Someone could like betray you real, real bad. And on the outside, you would not be able to tell. They see you as being able to move on very, very quickly. Your cutoff game could be extremely strong. We have the manifesting card. So people definitely see you as having extra spiritual power that most people do not have. Manifesting says you are in manifestation mode. Focus on what you want and tune out what you don't want. So people see you as having the ability to spiritually get what you want and completely disregard regular rules, social norms. You could be very rebellious in school, in the workplace, any place where people have to be around each other consistently and over time it's like whenever you come in there's no problem um you seem to be able to do your own thing without having negative consequences so like in school for an example you could be a whole black sheep but be friends with popular people be friends with smart people people who do really well academically you could have friends all over throughout school so people feel like they can't control you because you have access to every area. You still get invited to the parties. You still got to go here, do here. You still knew that person. This person that everybody wanted could have a crush on you. It's like, how do you get your way like that? People really want to find out your secret sauce. Oh my God, I'm getting a download. I don't know who this is. I'm hearing there's a character from the Bible. I know that it was Delilah that was sent to tempt this person. I'm just blanking on their name. Delilah was sent to tempt this person and find out the source of their power. I remember that the source of his power was in his hair. And Delilah essentially reported this information back to whoever paid her to be a spy and get that information and then they were able to finally take that person down because they knew the source of his power so i hate that i can't remember at the top of my head right now who that was let me know in the comments if you know that story and you know who it was i'm gonna look into it later to see if there's any extra symbolism there 
But um, I'm, I'm hearing that story all of a sudden, which is so, so random. So you may have a source of power and a lot of people are trying to figure out what is that source of power? Where does it come from? Why is group one so powerful? Okay, so lastly from this deck, we have cloudy skies. It says confusion and mystery surround the situation. Something is being hidden. You may have Scorpio or Pluto in the first house. That is a placement. Also Pisces in the first house can have that kind of mysterious dreamy effect as well. Um, but uh, yeah, there's an energy here of people not being able to figure you out. And there's so many placements that will make you mysterious or put a veil over you. Um, but you may have aspects in your chart that make you hard to read. You could be someone who has a complete poker face. It could be, you know, astrologically something. Your source of power could be wherever. You likely know what it is. Or maybe you're trying to figure out what it is. Maybe that's your life's work and mission. Other people feel like they cannot figure out what that hidden treasure is within you. They want to know what's your secret sauce. Why does group one always seem to get what they want? Spirit, why do people fear group one? Why do they fear them? Wow, we got the star with the wheel of fortune reversed. You know what? This comes across as irritation more than anything. You have some sort of privilege or some sort of power, whether it's psych uh, psychic, whether it's pretty privilege. With the star card, that is wish fulfillment. That is divine timing, divine alignment. It's like you always seem to get your way. But with the Wheel of Fortune in reverse, you don't even care about your power or you don't lean on it. You don't care about it as much as other people and it just irritates other people's soul. So say you have pretty privilege, you may not even use that to your advantage. You may not even really care about what you look like. You could be busted, go to the grocery store and get three people trying to run you down, get your number. And other people will just look at you and absolutely seethe because they can tell that you don't care and you don't appreciate the power that you have. Or like, you know, for example, when you're in school and uh, there's, you know, someone popular who has a crush on you or you always get invited here and there, you may not have even cared about any of that. And this just irritates people because it's like you have all this luck, all this power, and you don't even use it. You don't even care. We spend our whole lives, all of our time, working hard to achieve the things that you achieve or get what you get, and you get it so easily, and then you don't even care about it. You don't even use it. And also, this comes with um, other people as well. So, like, you may not care about other people's pretty privilege. You treat them completely normal. <laughs> and it's like it irritates them. You could meet someone famous and literally treat them like any other person. <clears throat> and because you don't respect those uh, social norms or treat them like it's the, you know, best, most biggest thing on earth, people feel deeply irritated or offended by that because it's like, I have to work so hard, but this person gets things so easily. And if it's just talking about fear, I feel like the fear would be that if you wanted to, you could probably take their man, their, their girl. If you wanted to, you could probably use that power to just crush just crush people's dreams desires <laughs> like their reputation like anything we have the eight of wands so you can be very fast and sporadic quickly moving you can move on from things very quickly now this is what comes when it comes to control of relationships friends and family eight of wands is i move very quickly i'm on to the next thing oh you don't like me no more okay well there's a whole line of people here that do I'm not sticking on you forever. People fear you because they can't control you, whether it's from a religious standpoint or a familial standpoint. You can go into the church because you believe in the message, you believe in the religion, but as soon as people start trying to control you, um, it's like, I, I'm not here for you. And people just, whoo, they cannot take that. They cannot take that. Um, they feel like, okay, you're here, so you should, you know, be able, I should be able to use you. Um, but people can't manipulate you. So when it's like, well, don't you want to, you know, come usher for this event? Or don't you want to do this free service? Don't you want to serve food? And it's like, that's not what I'm here for. And people get so offended that they cannot, you know, use you. 
We got a lot of major arcana coming out for you as well. We got the star, wheel of fortune. We now have the uh, full reversed and the strength card reversed. So you just completely don't um, fall into norms. You really don't. The strength card in reverse is a very humble spirit as well. So that goes back to the pretty privileged thing. You don't think you're the best thing since sliced bread. You know who you are. You have a good amount of confidence and you don't, you know, cower in fear um, or try to make yourself invisible when you're in a place, but you know who you are. So people can't tell you who you are. So they feel fear about that. Romantic interest can't tell you, oh, you're you're not all that because you already know who you are. You weren't looking to them for validation in the first place, so they cannot control you. Strength card reverse. I don't have to be the leader. I don't have to be the number one. I don't have to be this. I don't have to be that. I am who I am. I know who I am. Whew, you are powerful. Very, very powerful energy. And we have the fool it reversed. So this is like an energy of disengaging. People fear you because they cannot find you. It's like, where is group one? They don't know. They don't know where you are. You could be a homebody. You could be someone who spends a lot of time um, at home or, you know, doing what you want. You could be kind of untouchable or people can't really track you down. People may not know your interests. You could be a strong like a lone wolf type of archetype. Spirit, what is their karma for going against group one? Or if they have someone on their mind, what's going to happen to that person for what they've done to group one? <laughs> wow. Wow. We have alienation, lack, and divine protectors. Alienation says pushing others away, miscommunication, delusional, irritable, uh, jaded outlook, bad attitude, arguments, misunderstandings, and low frequencies. So people could try to alienate you and then get up, end up alienated themselves. And for you, it doesn't even work on you, which is like a double whammy because it's like, for one, group one doesn't seem to care, even if they are alienated. But two, the people who do care and thought that was going to be the final blow end up being the ones that end up, you know, in that position they were trying to put you in, but they actually do care. So it hurts double. That's crazy. We got the lack card. It says abundance reversals, abundance transference. So you could even get like luck or money, wealth in your account, in your life, blessings, kind of taken from other people and transferred to you in some way. I would not be surprised with all that psychic power and energy that came out. Um, it says uh, blockage, divine cycle, and tough times. We have divine protectors. It says expedited karma, judgment, intervention, shock, and swift. So yeah, you definitely likely have something in your chart or some powerful being a deity ancestor that really cares about you and takes it very personal when people try to take negative action towards you and it's like <clears throat> all of a sudden some way somehow people just end up in the most unfavorable position trying to go against you it's like it reverses all right, we got Sephiroth B with Ascension. It says, move into your true self. Rise above the darkness. The light is here. I feel like you may be a dark worker group one, or you may be someone who naturally moves in your shadow, almost like a black cat. You could be very comfortable with your shadow and who you really are, especially if you made it all the way to the end of this reading, because uh, some of these things could be very rough to hear. I feel like if anyone can hear it, though, it's you personally. It really feels like you have a I am rubber, you are glue type of of, um, just way of going through life type of mentality where it's like things can only affect you if you allow them to a lot of power and control over the mind but I feel like it may even be a part of your purpose to be in your dark energy we have Mother Mary with love and peace. It says, let go of the need to be right. Choose peace. Mother healing is possible at this time. So right at the end of the reading, we got Mother Mary coming through. Oh, we got Jesus at the bottom of the deck. Um, uh, 
and uh, you know, coming through telling you to choose peace. You know, some sometimes you have to grow into this energy. It's so so powerful when you're at the end of your journey. But everyone has a story. Most people don't start off like this. So just know that as time goes on, you will learn to harness this energy. You will learn to work with this energy and make it your biggest blessing. But people are so threatened by you, Group One. You're very powerful. That is what I have for you. My Etsy shop is in the description. If you would like your own private tarot reading or any of my other magical offerings, that is where you can find your girl. Uh, but that's what I got for you today. I'll talk to you soon. All right, if you chose group two with the orange diamond and the true self tarot, this is your reading, your dark side, your shadow. Why do people fear you? Their karma, how they see you, what they think you have going on. We'll get all of that spirit for group two with the orange stone. Please show us their shadow, their dark side. Ooh, wow. Their shadow, their dark side. Ooh, that's crazy. I was just about to say, I'm getting strong Don Juan or Femme Fatale energy. We got the Don Juan that just came out. One more spirit for group two. Why are people afraid of group two? What is their dark side, their shadow? <clears throat> We got two more and I will take them. I just heard dark angel. So I don't know what exactly that means, but I did hear that. Okay, so our first card here, we gotta be a little bit, you know, discreet about this one. The shadow attribute. Um, it says, places material considerations and security above self-empowerment. So you could be someone who's willing to have an unconventional job. You could be someone who's willing to present yourself in a certain way for that cash, if you know what I'm saying. Um, you could be someone who will have a taboo kind of job. You could be someone who maybe has a taboo lifestyle that other people can't understand or that other people typically uh, would avoid or be afraid of or stray from. You could be very taboo, taboo and unconventional. We have the lover. The shadow attribute, it says, obsessive passion that harms others, self-destructive devotion. So you could be someone that will love even when it hurts, hurts, you know, yourself or even people outside of you. We have the vampire. The shadow attribute says depleting others for your own psychic survival, chronic complaining, and codependency. So you could be someone who needs a lot of attention, a lot of love, a lot of devotion and energy. People who are ruled by Venus have a tendency to have this nature. If you have a Venus ruled sign in your moon, if you have the same sign in your Venus and your Lilith, that can also amplify the Venus and the Lilith and make it more intense. If you have a sign that's ruled by Venus in your rising as well, that can um, come through. So I would say that is Libra. Libra is ruled by Venus and Taurus as well. So if you have a Taurus moon, Taurus rising, Taurus or Venus, um, Lilith and uh, or Venus, these could make you more likely to more likely to be this way specifically when it comes to love and romance. Because we have so many qualities uh, that came out that have to do with other people. We have the first one. Um, we have the lover. We have the Don Juan. We have the companion here. This isn't a romance deck either at all. This is uh, just like an archetypes deck that has so many cards in it. So it's like for so many romantic cards to come out for you group two, you may really see this in romance. We have the Don Juan. It says using power of romantic attraction for private agendas. So you could be like a coquette archetype, someone who you know attracts people to you, and the 
And then you kind of like, you know, maybe play them or play with them or have your fun, entertain them and their desires until you don't want to anymore. And then you move on. <laughs> and it's like they're left shattered, confused. I thought group uh, two was obsessed with me. I thought group two would chase me to the ends of the earth. And it's like, even though it's extremely intense, your love, your attention, your affection, once it's gone, it's gone. And it leaves people in distress. I mean, shambles. We have the companion, the shadow attribute says betrayal by misusing uh, confidences, loss of personal identity. So yeah, a, a few of these aspects have that kind of uh, uh, energy where it's like you may lose yourself in other people. Um, you could be like overly committed to the point where you lose your own identity. You could be someone who it's like your aesthetic may even change depending on uh, who you're dating. You see this a lot, you know, with, I don't want to call them out by name but you see this a lot with Courtney you see this a lot with Ky Kylie you know you see this a lot with uh you know that family it's like their whole aesthetic will change depending on who they're dating Kylie's like old money aesthetic now Courtney's like more um kind of more edgy now and um it's obvious that it's you know due to their to who they're talking to you could have that a little bit. Uh, we have the angel, the shadow attribute. It says ac acting innocent or angelic to mislead others. Very strong. It's very strongly uh, associated with the coquette. Um, it says falsely claiming to be in touch with angelic guidance. I'm also hearing... Um, like that bimbo kind of aesthetic where it's like an over cute type of energy and vibe um but usually they just like they have some edge to them i'm telling you any girly who's like oh you know i'm super coquette it's like mm, beneath the surface you got a question like is there more to them is there more going on so you could um you could have those nuances <sighs> okay let's keep going let's switch gears so spirit what do they think group two has going on? What do they think group two is really about? Or what do they think they're doing? How do people see group two? How do they see them? So we have the justice card here, meaning that things are balanced and fair. So people feel like even though you come across as someone who may be more angelic or someone who may be all about love, you could also be one of the darker archetypes. I'm trying to think off the top of my head. I can't think of any. You let me know if you can think of some in the comments. But it just reminds me of like, you know, like a story of... Uh, someone who was a lover and then kind of went dark, you know, like in a mythology kind of way. I can't think of anyone at the top of my head, but you may have um, that kind of tendency. You may have that kind of... People, people feel like you have that that edge to you they feel like there's got to be something going on beneath the surface we got the luck card the first place my eyes go is to the angel wings <laughs> and we had the angel that came up this card says you will have luck in love matters so people see you as someone who's really able to take your pick someone who most people will fall for even if it's all illusionary or fake or even if it's not real even if the real you is like discipline a hard worker you know someone who goes super hard a beast in the gym you know what I'm saying people feel like they can't see that you know people can't see the dagger behind your back ready to strike they can only see the pretty face the pretty aesthetic you know and it's like they just fall for it every time I feel like you have a lot of control over people in romance and that can also be where you do the most damage or even where you experience the most damage. One of these cards said that uh, this is something that could even, you know, negatively affect you. It was the lover saying that you could throw yourself into relationships even when it hurts you. 
We have the luck card again. It's a different one though. It says you will have luck in business and work matters. So people see you as getting your way in love. People see you as having a lot of luck in business as well. People could even accuse you for using your wiles to get certain things. People could say, oh, he got that promotion because, you know, the hiring manager liked him or she got that position because, you know, the hiring manager thought, you know, she was cute, so on and so forth. We have the justice card. It says you will receive karmic justice for the wrongs done to you in the past. Wrongs are made right. So I'm hearing apology with this. People may end up having to apologize for you. People may try to slander you some way, somehow it gets reported to HR or some way, somehow it gets back to you. It gets reported like say in school to a principal and they end up having to apologize. If you have like a public platform, for an example, um, People may end up having to apologize for uh, what they have uh, said when it comes to you. We have the magnify card. It says something you may have overlooked will bring you new insight and clarity. So people feel like eventually you end up finding out everything. And I don't know if it was maybe just my bestie. I had a Taurus bestie. That girl you can't get past that girl it's so it's actually so crazy how information just fell into her lap and so if you have those strong Taurian Libran placements I don't know what it is about Venus but she's a crafty girl okay she is crafty AF and she gets her way and um you know information may literally just fall into your lap you could have a whole group of people that may try to gang up on you or talk about you and then People from that group literally doubling back to you once they're alone working with you. It's a shift where it's just you and them. Or you have a class project and both of you are in the same group. They're just spilling the beans. Spilling the beans. Telling you so-and-so is really the one behind it. And this is really what was said. And this is really what was done. And it's like you were a part of that group. So you're telling on yourself. You guys may get the information, the tea, one way or another, literally without trying. <clears throat> We have new ideas. It says a new idea comes to you that will change your world, a game changer. So it seems like you have access to a certain information. Also, I just heard beauty secret. Um, so you may have access to a specific beauty secret that will completely change the look of your skin, will completely change your health for the positive. And um, it could be something that's so simple or it could be something that's passed down from your family or in your culture that most people do not know about. Also, when it comes to new ideas in business um, and even new ideas to keep your partners engaged in love, it seems like they're always coming to you without even trying and this gives you a huge advantage over other potential romantic um, opposers people who want the people that you want um, or it can give you like extreme luck in business also I'm picking up that you may be really good at channeling and thinking on your feet uh, spring it says a new cycle is beginning it's time to spring into action so people see you as constantly changing constantly evolving having new ideas having new people new things going on in life it's like soon as the workplace finally gets enough people to try to turn on you there's two new people that are hired that are, are obsessed with you that are on your side and oh there you go you regain power I'm also picking up that people end up turning on themselves and against each other when they they try to come against you spirit for group two why do people fear group two why do they fear them we have the eight of wands and the queen of wands so a lot of fire energy um queen of wands is very very hot queen of wands is aries energy just so just so like intensely passionate and physically attractive as well. And the Eight of Wands is very quick, fast moving energy. People fear you because your power has the ability to make change very quickly. Things change very quickly around you. You can have one meeting, one conversation with people, and it can shift the whole situation. It can shift everything that's going on. You have the ability to turn a situation around 
instantly. And it's like people can put in work for weeks, for months to get people to see you a certain way or get people to respond to you a certain way. But um, as soon as you have that conversation, as soon as you make that move, it's like eight of wands, things just change so rapidly and unexpectedly. People cannot keep up with you. They cannot keep track of you. They cannot figure out your next move. Dang, we got the hangman reverse. So why do people fear you? You are absolutely relentless. You will not give up because you will not give up, period. Because you just don't and won't. <laughs> It's like, wow, it seems like you have the ability to stop bags as well. Um, I'm also now picking up on an energy that you may disrupt the workplace specifically. Hangman reverse, you do not give up. Eight of pentacles reverse, you can stop people's bags. Chariot reverse, you can stop people and their success, their ability to move forward, their ability to move on. People are afraid of you because you will be the one that got away forever. And you could be the kind of person that once you make your mind up, once you're done, you just kind of skip, you know, <laughs> on to the next thing without a thought, without a regret. So it's like people cannot keep you stuck. People cannot control you. And once you're done, you're done. Once you move on, you have moved on. So <clears throat> it's like people stay stuck on you for years. But once you decide that you're moving on, you're moving on. And it's with no care. We got the Queen of Pentacles reversed and the Five of uh, Cups reversed. So you're actually willing to have nothing. You can completely humble yourself and disengage. You can have spent years working towards something, but you will walk away from it if you feel disrespected. You can walk away from a high earning salary and go have another job and move on to it without any fear because you know you will be successful. You may be very much so aware of your power. You may be very much so aware of your luck because Queen of Pentacles reverse says, oh, okay, I don't want to be here anymore. I'm willing to throw all this away and replace it for something else there's always another job there's always another romantic partner and this is why people fear you because they cannot control you through your own desires because it's your desire so soon as that desire goes away internally you will move on you know and with that five of cups reverse you will feel no type of way about it people could feel very resentful that you don't hang on to things or put the same amount of weight on things as they do. Like, so you could have someone who is, you know, uh, older or has more tenure in the workplace than you. They've been with the company for 15 years and they had to hustle for every promotion. You walk in, you get your promotion immediately. And then it's like, oh, if there's drama or, oh, I'm not passionate about this anymore, you'll move on to the next job. <sighs> Oh, it just, it, it, it angers people because it's like they have worked for years for that and they would do anything for that position, anything for that salary. You get it so easily and you're willing to just, you know, walk away from it if you want to. Let's see their karma. Spirit, what are people's karma for messing with group two? Or if they have someone specific on their mind, what is their karma for doing what they did to group two? <clears throat> oh, that's very interesting. And going on with the theme of like love and romance, we have divine feminine slash divine masculine block. It says divine connection denied, missed opportunities, false soulmates and connections and low vibrational uh, relationships. So people may end up missing out on a soulmate, a higher level connection, etc., for what they do. I'm like, what is that in your chart that makes it so romance based? Because we keep getting that theme. We have missed opportunities. It says missing out, right place, wrong time, too little, too late, investment loss, remorse, failed ideas, blinded and slow to realize. So people may not even realize just how negative the effects are 
and they may not even connect it to you right away, which is a protector of you because it's like if people don't make that connection, they're not going to try to chase you down for a solution or for you to fix it. And it's like they don't even come to and realize fully what is happening until it's like you're long gone. It seems like, you know, it, it almost seems like delayed karma where people get karma after it's been long enough to where they don't relate it to you. And we have divine protectors here, which does say expedited karma. So I feel like it depends on your safety. People could get instant karma, but if you're still in the midst, if you're still close to them or the situation, the karma will be delayed until you're removed from their life, from their situation, so that things can't come back to bite you in some way or negatively affect you. It says shocked, swift judgment and intervention. So people definitely get the attention of the higher level, the gods, okay? We have lack of clarity. It says unable to see or think clearly. Exhaustion, confusion, stress, anxiety, lost. People start to just not even like be able to function normally. And then we have egg on their face. It says, having to eat your words, needing to apologize. That's crazy. I was talking about that earlier in your reading. Like, people feel like they have to apologize to you. They have to make it right with you. Um, it says, backfired, ashamed, plans, failing, evil eye, failing. <laughs> Whoa. People have a lot of negativity that they have to deal with if they come against you. That is what I have for you, group two. My Etsy shop is in the description. If you would like your own private tarot reading, that is where you can find me. And that's what I got for you today. I'll talk to you soon. All right, if you chose group three with the pink diamond and the life's journey tarot, this is your reading tapping into your dark side your shadow we're gonna see why people fear you how they see you their karma for messing with you what do people think you got going on beneath the surface we're gonna get all of that spirit for group three with the pink stone please show us their shadow their dark side for group three What is their shadow? <clears throat> what is their dark side? All right. Let's see what we got. Okay, so we have the artist, the shadow attribute of the artist. It says using talent as a way to mistreat posting or sorry no it's not posting posing as the starving artist to elicit pity mm. you know this is giving me an energy of some of you really do have a lot of artistic qualities some of you may even be able to make money from your artistry but you may allow yourself to be in an unpleasant situation you know like the starving artist kind of archetype but to the extent where you could do something else even if it was like you know financially for an example you could you know have something part-time but Maybe you really revel in that starving artist, you know, kind of energy, or maybe you even do self-sabotaging behaviors due to the artist's lifestyle. So say you're a singer, for an example, the gigs could be intermittent, you may not work in the meantime, or, you know, there could be uh, a lot of partying and you could even like excessively party because it comes with the lifestyle, you know, kind of thing. So there could be some of that going on. 
we have the victim, shadow attribute of the victim. It says playing the victim for positive feedback in the form of pity. That is the second card coming out talking about pity. Um, inability to maintain personal boundaries. So you may let people in to the point where you know it could be harmful, you know it could come back to bite you, but you let people in because you want them to see your pain. You know, honestly, I'm, al I'm almost feeling like you could even poeticize your or romanticize the pain and you could uh, find a way to be comfortable in that uncomfortable space or find a way to be to to kind of like really sit in and revel in the unfortunate things that have happened. So you may think about often like, you know, negative circumstances or experiences, and you may share those experiences for an opportunity to kind of relive them because you've poeticized it in some way or romanticized it or some way, somehow it may give you a reason to um, be the way you are now even. We have the child eternal. The shadow attribute says the ability to, uh, sorry, inability to grow up and be responsible. Extreme dependency on others for physical security. So there could be a lot of uh, couch surfing here. You could depend on people to um, an unrealistic extent, say that's friends or family. Um, you could ask for favors that maybe you shouldn't really ask for, or you could lean on others more than you should. Um, yeah, I'm hearing codependency in relationships as well. That could be another way the shadow kind of shows up. We have the child magical. I'm starting to feel like there could be some actual childhood trauma here though with these repeating themes. Um, the child magical, the shadow attribute says pessimism or disbelief in miracles, believing that energy and action are not required for growth. So you could be someone who, someone who has a very strong it is what it is mentality but to the extent that it's just more pessimistic there could be an acceptance even of negative conditions and that kind of doubles down where I'm personally feeling like there may actually be an origin story to this there may actually be a root cause to this I feel like there could actually be a reason something that has happened and with the victim card it did say something about kind of like retelling your your stories or sharing your pain with other people even to an uncomfortable extent or oversharing so i feel like there is something to say there is a story um but you could replay that story and hold on to that story even though things are different things have changed time has passed and you could choose a new path there's an energy here of kind of like staying there and sticking to what has happened we have the liberator. It says, imposing your own tyranny over those you claim to liberate and ignoring legitimate constraints. So this could be girl bossing or hustling too hard to the point where you really end up drained when it comes to ignoring legitimate constraints. Um, this could be controlling people. Um, uh, like spiritually or when it comes to whatever you believe in it's like you may have very powerful useful beliefs and you share those with other people and it's like at first they're really motivated they really believe in what you're saying but as soon as they try to walk away and go their own path you may reel people back in and create a dependency all right let's switch gears spirit what do people think group three has going on what do how do people see group three what do they think they have going on what do they think they're doing how do they see group three some way somehow things end up working out for you though it's like you get I, yeah 
That's what I think it is. It's like when it comes to long-term success, that you may not really see in your life, but when it comes to opportunities or lucky breaks or experiences, those you do get. So I feel I feel like people feel resentment towards you because of the luck that you receive. We even have the reversals card here, so it's like you could get yourself in a bind, but some way somehow the universe takes you out of that situation. And people may feel like, "No, group 3 deserves a lesson and it's like when spirit comes through and says no I'm actually going to save group three people could feel like bitterness towards that reversal says the situation is positively turning around for you so you seem to have second chances you seem to have reversals that occur in your life divine intervention where the spirit realm or spirit will come by and save you or help you We have the recovery card here. It says you will bounce back from money-related issues. So even if you um, have a heavy dependency on family financially, or even if you end up in a situation where it's like, oh, my car got totaled, or I, I lost this apartment, I got evicted, or something like that, some way, somehow, you end up with another living situation. You end up with another car. And people, I'm feeling, feel the, the desire to control you. And you are secretly low-key in full control. So people can't, it's like, you may use like the victim card when it um, when it benefits you, but you're not a true victim. So when people say, oh, this is the perfect person that I can control and manipulate, they find out the hard way. Mm, group three can't actually be controlled at all. Group three will share their stories or trauma because that's what they want to do. Group three may be a victim when they want to or when they choose to acknowledge those stories and things that have happened. But when it comes to just controlling group three, that they cannot do. People end up finding that out the hard way. So I feel like people have this idea of you or you may present yourself to be one way, but then when people try to use that to their advantage, they can't. We have the luck card. You will have luck in health matters. So when things go wrong for you health-wise, it seems like there's a solution that comes in. You could have a period of time where you're feeling low. You're feeling like, you know, nothing can change. And then some way, somehow, you end up feeling on top of the world for weeks, for months. And it's like you feel amazing. And it's like all of a sudden, things turn around for you. So people feel like you have a lot of divine help, a lot of divine protection, a lot of divine it seems like some way somehow things kind of turn around to your favor or turn around working in your favor we have the messages card so people definitely see you as someone with a lot of connections and I'm, I just heard eyes everywhere so people see you as someone who has eyes everywhere messages says a long-awaited message finally arrives incoming communication you know what I feel like you're the kind of person where it's like your exes may never move on from you you may know that people will come crawling back to you and they literally do we have the signs card. So people see you as being able to see straight through them. You can read people extremely well. I feel like you're very street smart or you're very good with dark psychology, able to see the true intention that lies behind people's words and actions. And it just kind of brings me back to, it's like, wait, I thought group three was a victim. And it's like, no, group three is just a victim when they want to be or when they you know, choose to acknowledge that side of themselves. But when they try to control you, it's like you can see it coming from a mile away. The science card, it says, pay attention to the signs around you now. Spirit is trying to get your attention on some matter. So it seems like... It seems like spirit will put you on to certain things and even give you advanced warnings. We have the start card. The beginning of a new cycle approaches. Get ready. So people see that you're not down too, too long. Um, I'm hearing uh, knock me down nine times, but I get up ten. 
there's an energy that there's there's this uncanny ability for you to bounce back from anything that you've gone through. It just seems like you're God's favorite, highly favored. We got the Empress at the bottom of the deck. It's just like some way, somehow you're taken care of and people just cannot take that. Spirit, show us why are people afraid of group three? Why do people fear group three? Dang, we got the Queen of Cups reverse. It's giving me strong Lilith energy, strong unconventional feminine energy with it being the Queen of Cups versus the King of Cups. It's giving, I'm not Eve, I'm not laying down on my back. I am on top. I am in control. I am... I embrace my shadow attributes. I embrace the things that I have gone through. You cannot embarrass me. People fear you because even if you've gone through like the most embarrassing thing, it does not embarrass you. Even if you've been in the most unfortunate situation, it does not stick with you forever. Or it's something that some way, somehow gets romanticized by you and you're able to see it in a more positive way. I'm feeling a lot of this may be in uh, romance as well. We got the Ten of Cups that came out reversed as well. People are not able to get you stuck on them forever. Um, people are not able to control you in romantic relationships. Also, I feel like romantic partners may have a really hard time holding space for you. They may have a really hard time understanding you. And so it's like you could tell them like, a story that has happened where someone has did you so, so dirty in the past in a relationship and then they get in an argument with you and they try to bring that up and you could have been bawling, crying when you were telling them the story, but as soon as they try to use it against you, instantly it's like you register their intention behind bringing it up so it does not affect you. Um, but specifically, people may try to bring up like messed up things that have happened in relationships to you and it does not affect you and they fear you because it's like you could have had a divorce you could have had you know a long-term relationship that was supposed to lead to engagement marriage etc that didn't work out and people try to use that against you like say family for example you can't keep a man you can't get a girl da 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 da, da. and it's like it doesn't bother you because you know the intention behind it so people are not able to control you mentally we have the death card here as well. You are willing to let go and move on and that's why people are afraid of you. You are willing to end situations and literally never turn back. You've experienced many, I'm hearing funeral by band of horses. Um, the lyrics in the song and is every occasion I'm ready for the funeral. And essentially it's about it could be the most happy situation. It could be the most fruitful situation. But I've gone through so many endings. I've gone through so many funerals that in every occasion, I'm ready for the funeral. So it talks about being ready for things to end, being ready to let go. Um, so I'm hearing that song. You may want to look it up and look up the lyrics. Maybe there's um, some other things you'll resonate with in that song. It's The Funeral by Band of horses is the name of the artist um also with the death card I'm feeling kind of like a little bit of a spooky vibe with that you may be very drawn to um skulls um you could be very drawn to Halloween um cemeteries um the color black yeah, I'm seeing a really pale skin with black um almost like an aesthetic for someone specifically <laughs> And we have the Seven of Pentacles reversed. So that is very strong. In every occasion, I'm ready for the funeral energy. Seven of Pentacles reversed says, I will completely divest all of my energy from what I have invested in. I will let go of that friendship. I will let go of that relationship. I will move. I will let go of that apartment. I will let go of that car. None of it matters to me. People can't control you with situations, with their presence, or with material items. Dang, we got the Ten of Wands. People fear you because the negative things that have happened in your life are some way, somehow your strength. 
Six of Wands reversed at the bottom of the deck. You don't need to be successful. You don't need to be the best, uh, most... Um, uh, accomplished person in the room, in the friend group, etc. None of that matters to you. People fear you because they cannot control you with their degrees, with their fame, notoriety, their name, their power. We got the Ten of Wands with the Chariot reversed. So you have an amazing ability to find comfortability in uncomfortable situations or unfortunate situations. Not everyone can do that. And that is why people fear you because they can do something to you that is supposed to punish you or hurt you in some way. And it literally does not affect you at all. Spirit, what is their karma for messing with group three? Or if they have someone specific on their mind, what is their karma for that action they took against group three? <clears throat> All right, so we have career blocks. Stagnancy in career, blocked by higher ups, lack of advancement, micromanage, boredom, overbearing boss, and overlooked. So when it comes to career, if that's how people mess with you, especially since you're willing to leave the job, <laughs> you're willing to start over, and every occasion I am ready for the funeral, you will have luck and recovery when it comes to money-related issues and reversals. People will try to do things to you, and then it ends up happening to them. It like it's like things really oh we got the reversals card actually here so it's like things literally that's two different decks talking about reversals we got the reversals card from this deck and we got the reversals card for their karma uh, it says upside down nothing works extreme stress everything's wrong feeling like the world is against you so it's like when people try to take action towards you they end up with more stress and reversals themselves. We have the On Blast card. It says dark secrets revealed, aired, damaged reputation, worry, betrayed by their inner circle, injury, humiliation. So people end up put on blast. People end up exposed for what they do. We have alienation. It says uh, pushing others away, miscommunication, delusions, irritability, jaded outlook, bad attitude, misunderstandings, and lowered frequencies. So it's like people could try to shut you out and end up shut out themselves. Spirit, what other messages can you give for group three? Anything uplifting after all of this? We have Hilarion with Divine Healing. It says, honor your sensitivity, retreat to recharge and heal your light can support others. So that brings me back to the artist attribute. Your artistry is so potent because you've actually gone through it because it's real. When you share a story, it's real. So Spirit is saying, make sure you take time to recharge and heal. We have Archangel Michael with Trusting Heaven. It says, you are safe. Angels stand close. Surrender your concerns and allow miracles to occur. So even with people being salty that you have extra protection or extra blessings from higher realms, from spirit, the divine, um, the spirit realm is still telling you, continue, continue to trust us, lean on us, and allow us to direct you and to help you. <laughs> That is what I have for you, group three. My Etsy shop is in the description. If you would like your own private tarot reading or any of my other magical offerings, that is where you can find me. And that's what I have for you today. I'll talk to you soon. All right, if you chose group four with the green diamond and the weird world tarot, this is your reading tapping into your dark side your shadow why people why people fear you why they're afraid of you their karma for going against you how they see you what they think you have going on we're gonna get everything spirit for group four with the green stone show us their shadow their dark side for group four <clears throat>
for group four. Yeah, there's a lot going on here already. All right, let's talk about it. Okay, so first we have the hedonist. The shadow attribute says pursues pleasure to the detriment of your own health and indulges at the expense of others. So this could be like your friend is like, oh, I'm not really hungry or oh, I'm trying to cut back. And you're like, no, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. You good. Let's go to hot pot. You're trying to go on a low sodium diet, let's go to McDonald's. <laughs> it's like, yeah, don't really care. I want what I want, so let's go do it. Um, and this is even, you know, it says uh, pursues pleasure to the detriment of your own health. So you could be someone who always indulges, whether it's food, whether it's people, whether it's partying, whatever it is that you're wanting to do, whatever it is that you're interested in, you can indulge to the extent that it could, you know, negatively impact your own health. We have the advocate, it says, embracing negative causes or committing to causes for personal gain. So there could be some opportunistic, uh, you know, nuance to you. You could take like a negative situation and use it to somehow profit. You could take um, even like the the pain or you know the the negative aspects of other people and what they've experienced in some way somehow use that to your advantage. So, say you have uh, you know someone telling you, oh, I've been through this and this and this. You could say, mm, I could use someone who's been through those things because they may be easier to control <laughs> or to get this out of. So you may use them. Uh, to your own advantage. Uh, also with that one, I'm feeling like you could play devil's advocate for the fun of it or not going to lie, you could have like uh, like a burner account or a spam account that you use to say whatever you want to say or to troll. There could be a little bit of that. Um, we have the dilettante. It says presentation to or sorry, no, it says pretension to much deeper knowledge than you actually possess. So you could scare people with your ideas. You could say things that aren't true and use that for like intimidation to a degree. So you could have, you know, the ability to kind of mix truth with falsehoods and use that to kind of get people to do what you want them to do or to think certain things if that will benefit you. We have the gambler. It says relying on luck rather than hard work. So you could have some aspect in your chart that makes you un like uncharacteristically lucky. Um, you could have just uh, luck in general. You could have you know extra help on the spirit from the spirit realm um, that makes you lucky, and you may really lean on that to the extent that it's like, oh, I'm not going to study. I'm going to get a good grade on the test, or if I don't. I don't really care. You know, it's kind of like you take a lot of risks and, and gambles. We have the thief, shadow attribute. It says stealing money, creative ideas, affection, or other powers you think you lack. So that really sticks out to me. The part that says or other powers that you think you lack. So you could be one of those kind of people, which I don't feel like is inherently negative, but it can be if overdone. You could be one of those people who will take aspects of people's personalities, or you will take jokes or things that have been said or things that have been done, uh, little quirks from other people, and you may, uh, you know, present those quirks to new people that you meet or people that are not connected to or related to the person you got it from. And people may just think, you are the cutest little, you are the quirkiest little, you're the funniest, da 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 da, da. And really, it's actually things you've collected from other people. You could have a tendency to, you know, listen, steal. Um, and with it says steal money, it could be literally, but I, I feel like this is in a sales sense is the way I'm feeling it. You could have worked a retail job at a certain point or some sort of job where your uh, part of your income depends on sales and you could have kind of taken sales or credit or, you know, say you have a coworker that helps someone the entire time. 
you could, as uh, soon as that person walks away for a second, start talking to that customer, start helping that customer. When the other person was helping before, make it awkward. Next thing you know, the customer gets to the register and then they're like, well, I, I guess group four actually did help me. <laughs> and it's like, boom, you got the sale, you got the money. And then we have the child divine. It says inability to defend oneself against negative forces. So this could mean that you end up using other people to defend you, or this could mean that you're uh, extremely vulnerable. Okay, spirit. So how do people see group four? What do they think group four has going on? How do people see group four and what do they think they have going on? Mm. Definitely seems like you have a lot of, um, you get a lot of attention and are very lucky. Wow, we got the gambling card that came out from two different decks by two different uh, artists, creators, authors heavy on the gambling energy. Wow, we got the wish card. So there is something very magical about you. There could be something in your chart that makes you very lucky. There could be something in your chart that some way, somehow makes it so you always seem to get your way. We have wishes. It says you will experience a wish fulfillment. Dreams really do come true. So you could have something that you've gone for. So say you've always wanted to start your own social media platform. You could have one friend who's been doing it for years. You finally make your own platform and then boom, all of a sudden you have gone viral. Um, or, you know, you could have a desire um, and you kind of instantly have this ability to get it. Um, and again, it's bringing me back to some sort of higher force. Um, I'm now seeing genies, like uh, like magical genies that grant wishes. You could have some sort of deity or higher force that favors you, that likes you. And if that is the case, you likely see a lot of their symbolism all over. So like, say you're really close to like Aphrodite or Venus, you may always come across like uh, seashells or roses, you know, things that are synonymous with these deities. You could have a deity or a being in the spirit realm that really helps you and that brings you luck and opportunities. We have the manifesting card. It says you are in manifestation mode. Focus on what you want and tune out what you don't want. So people see you as someone who has a lot of luck. People may question if you practice magic as well. Uh, people see you as someone who is connected to a higher power. They think that you are super lucky and it it's like they cannot figure out where the source of that power is. We have the gambling card. It says a lucky gamble will pay off for you. Take a chance and win. So it seems like some way, somehow, you always seem to get your way. You could take the biggest risk. You could take the biggest gambles. And you really do end up in a favorable position. People don't understand it. They don't know how this happens. They don't get it. But they can see it. And I feel like people want to harness it. It's like they want to be close to you so they can have some of that lucky energy run off on you. Um, you always seem to get your way. And now, now I'm feeling this strongly with like friendships. This is a reason that people will try to be close to you uh, as a friend because they want to benefit from your luck or the opportunities that you randomly seem to get without trying. We have opportunity. It says a new opportunity is coming towards you. So people see you as someone who gets a lot of opportunities, a lot of possibilities. People think that you have a new opportunity that you're working on. People think that you're manifesting and they think that the risks that you're taking are working for you and are actually bringing you positive experiences. We have the spotlight card. It says all eyes are on you or another person receiving attention wanted and unwanted. So I just saw like spirit was showing me a child, like a young girl. So that's the unwanted. I feel as a young girl, you may have experienced a lot of attention from like older masculines or even older feminines. Now spirit is showing me an older feminine with like 
their hair pulled back and I'm seeing a chalkboard behind them. So you could have had teachers obsessed with you that wanted to humble you or wanted to always call on you. This could be in a positive way too where it's like you didn't even have to try and teachers kind of put you as a you know teacher's pet position where it's like they always you know let you run the envelope down to the office or they always you know take your word on it you could be antagonizing someone all day that kid finally goes off and some way somehow the teachers believe that that person just randomly attacked you you know it's like you could have received a lot of attention that also came up with the going viral energy um, that we got before. So it seems like you're in the spotlight and you get a lot of attention. And I'm feeling like I'm hearing authority figures and also rich, like spirit is showing me wealth. So you may attract the attention of rich people. People may see you as someone who's uh, affluent or elegant or, um, oh my goodness, now I'm hearing that have you guys ever seen that video? It went viral and it was like this guy left this girl a voice note and he says in the voice note, you're very elegant but and your friends are probably jealous but I'm not a guy who messes around, okay? So you need to call me by Thursday 3 p.m. Something crazy. I'm hearing that voice note now, which is so crazy. That video went viral like years ago. I heard that years ago. If you know, you know. If you don't, it doesn't really matter but I feel like spirit is bringing that up because you may incite that kind of obsessive behavior from people where it's like they feel like they are just so desperate for your communication, for your attention. But also people may see you like cause the, the guy says in the voice note to that girl, you're very elegant. Your friends are probably jealous. So if they say da 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 da, don't believe them. They're jealous. <laughs> I, I feel like people project a whole lot onto you positive attributes like you're so elegant and you could be the most like humble laid back not caring kind of person don't even try it's like you look at yourself you're like what why do you think all of this about me you you may have experienced that so so spirit why do people fear group four why do they fear them why are people afraid of group four okay we got the judgment card and the fool card. So people could completely end up in a totally different position when you leave them. Um, we got the four of wands at the bottom of the deck. People could see you as wife material, husband material, perfect partner material, but it seems like you have a tendency not to surrender. And that could be just for the fun of it. You could have someone you're attracted to, but keep a part of yourself to yourself so that you always have the ability to leave if you need to so that they can never fully control you. Uh, we have the Fool and the Judgment card here. The Fool is about new beginnings, big transformations, and Judgment is a call to action. It has the Judgment Day associations as well. It's an energy of higher powers. People are afraid of you because the higher power kind of um, requires them to do right by you. Also, the higher power brings a lot of people to you to learn certain things and experience certain things. This could be in a positive way or a negative way. If it's a negative way, you could be kind of like, an exercising presence where it's like the power of, you know, you could be someone who literally is meant to transmute, you know, like, like low vibrational, like crazy forces out of people. So people may come to you and you could be karma. You could be their karma. Um, you could be like a femme fatale or a Don Juan. Um, I feel like spirit will show people the possibilities with you or it's like people meet you and they have this insatiable desire to claim you, to have you, to be with you and you have a lot of resistance towards them and also spirit may put people in your path that are obsessed with you but you're not mutually obsessed with. So they fight their whole lives to try to please you or to make you theirs and it just never works out and that ends up being their karma for something that has happened earlier. Yeah, we have the two of swords. It's like I do not surrender. I know 
who I am, what I want. I have my own frequency. I have my own life. We have the page of wands reverse. That's also like people cannot put you into position and control you. People cannot sick you on other people. So it's like, say someone has uh, an ex and they want to make that ex jealous. They may try to connect with you to make that ex jealous, but they end up the one jealous <laughs> and it's just a disaster. It kind of feels like whatever people try to do, it ends up backfiring. You end up being very unexpected. I feel like the way you look is not the way that you are. I feel like you have a certain look about you that would lead people to believe that you're a certain way, but that's not actually the way you are. So people end up trying to, it's like they tr they move in a way that is based off of their assumptions and then they find out who you truly are and they end up with like, you know, egg on their face. They end up disappointed. They end up not being able to control you at all. So it's like people may invest time, money, energy, a whole lot of resources in you in the beginning thinking that it's going to pay off for them because they will be able to use you down the line. But they do not get the return on their investment. So people end up worse off after dealing with you. We have the Four of Cups here as well. People could end up hurt, disappointed, again, bringing me back to that femme fatale, Don Juan kind of energy. You could have a very innocent look about you when really you're super, super powerful. We actually have the magician here that has just come out. Um, dang, the magician, the knight of swords, the knight and the nine has come out of swords. So it's like you're a whole warrior and you can leave people in disarray. You can leave people completely hurt and heartbroken. I feel like you end up playing the player group four and that's why people are afraid of you because they have all these assumptions based on how you look of who you are and then six of pentacles reverse they end up without money with less money with less opportunity they end up in a unfavorable position because magician you hold a lot of power people listen to you you have the ability to direct energy in a spiritual way and also to direct people and to get people to do what you want we have the Page of Swords and the Ten of Wands here. It kind of reminds me of like, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Especially with that Ten of Wands, that's also giving me an energy of, I can go without, I can have nothing and I will still be okay. So people can't control you with material things or with what they have. Spirit, what are people's karma for messing with group four? Or if they have someone specific on their mind, what is that person's karma? for what they have done to group four. I'm not taking all of those, just the one that flipped over initially. Dang, we got the manifesting card that came up from this deck. We got the magician that came up from the tarot manifesting it says issues manifesting goals manifesting blocks stagnancy creative blocks and stuck we were just talking about that about how people come into your life they could be the player they could be the person that always has their way and they come into your life and all of a sudden they are losing we have employment it says issues finding work unemployment dependency temporary work stressed loans and overlooked so people could start having their bag stopped once they mess with you, having a hard time uh, having a job. It actually says loans on here as well. I don't think I said that. So they could kind of go into uh, debt even as karma. Anything else for their karma? Dang, we got job issues that came up and home issues. Job issues says tough times at work, demoted, micromanaged, overlooked, stressed, overworked. Home issues says problem with necessities, home repairs, late bills, lease, denied, rent increases and issues with neighbors. That is their karma. That is what I have for you, group four. My Etsy shop is in the description. If you would like your own private tarot reading or any of my other magical offerings, that is where you can find me. And that's what I got for you today. I'll talk to you soon.